This video presents the main updates in Archiframe 2018. I'll start by summarizing the most important improvements. First, Archiframe is now compatible with Archicad 22. Archiframe has several new default settings for projecting elements. It is now possible to create multi-sheet layouts. The drilling, machining, and marking tools have been improved. New listing types have also been added. Tools for modeling I-beams with reinforcements have been improved. New options for writing CNC files have been added. Finally, a new custom corner tool has been created. Starting with compatibility, Archiframe is now compatible with Archicad versions 17 to 22 for Windows and 19 to 22 for Mac. Then let's move on to element projection settings. These can be found in the own element types window. In the drop down menu next to based on, there are four new projection options. In all of them, the wall is viewed from outside to inside. Let's look at these options in more detail. I'll change the projection settings of my wall type by selecting the first option just framing with cut list having machinings, and then clicking OK. Then, without selecting any elements in Archiframe, I'll select the arrow next to the Update button and select Regenerate allowing reposition. This updates the elevations. Here is a comparison of the projection results. In the new projection, the drawing showing cladding is not included. The cut list has moved to the right. Machinings, such as grooves, are now also included in the cut list. And finally, a giant title has appeared above the drawing. Its purpose is to make it easier to find the drawing when the view is zoomed out. I'll show you screenshots of two other new projection settings. The setting entitled Wall Frame Plus Cladding Out to In with Cut List Having Machinings looks like this. Unlike in the first option, cladding is shown in this elevation. The third option from the top is for floors and roofs, so I will skip that for now and move on to the fourth option, Multi-Sheet External Wall from Out to In. In this setting, projections for different layers of the wall are drawn on different sheets. Each sheet is represented by a rectangular border, while all sheets belonging to a single elevation are bounded by a larger rectangle. I'll apply this setting to our project. This brings us to the third new feature in Archiframe, the ability to create multi-sheet layouts. I'll start by creating a 1 to 50 view of my elevation. Then I'll give the view a name, Elevations Ground Floor. The zooming of the view does not matter. I can even save a view with none of the elevation visible and the layouts will still be created correctly. Next, from the Plank Settings window, I'll open the Quantity Takeoff section. From here, I'll open Printing and Layouts. I'll select empty A3 masters for both portrait and landscape layouts and set the scale to 1 to 50, the same scale that our view had. I want my layouts to be automatically updated with Archicad views, so I'll check this box. Then I'll select the view that I previously defined and finally I'll click OK. If I now open the Layout tab in the Archicad Navigator, I see that new layouts have been created for all the views in my story. In some cases, the view might not fit on the layout. If this happens, you can fix the problem by manually editing the elevation drawings. In this case, I'll move the table to the left side of the drawing so it will not be visible in the next layout.
One thing you may want to change in the main elevation is the visibility of the cladding. This can be done in the own element settings dialog in the same composite settings to template section we looked at earlier. If I empty the boards and claddings in projection exterior field, only the framing layer of the wall will be visible in the elevation. Another function that might be useful is creating layouts for specific elevations. If I want to create layouts for a single, multi-sheet elevation, I would select the outer border of the elevation before creating the layout. If I want a layout for an individual sheet, I would instead select that sheet's border before creating the layout. Here you can see the result. We created a new layout from the main framing sheet and in that elevation, you no longer see cladding. Next, let's move on to the new features of the drilling tool. In Archiframe 2018, it is now possible to use ARCHICAD 3D objects to drill holes in Archiframe planks. Here I have a pipe passing through a floor joist in the demo house, and I want to use this pipe to drill a hole in the joist. To do so, I'll control click the plank settings and from the emerging dialog, I'll select the drilling tool. The drill tool now contains a new option, drill selection with picked pieces. With this, I can select the pieces of the pipe which I want to use to create holes. With a negative value for the diameter, I can add some oversize to the hole, for example 10 millimeters. I also need to pick a side for my drilling hole. In this case, the front is fine. Then I'll click Do New, and here you can see the result. Another improvement in the Archiframe machining section is the bulk shoe tool. I'll apply a bulk shoe to this small floor joist at the side of the floor. The bulk shoe tool can also be found below the drill icon in the manual edit section. From the drop down list, I'll select bulk shoes. First, I'll give the bulk shoe a code which will be used to create listings. Then, I'll determine that the bulk shoe will be added to the top of the joist. I'll isolate this plank in the 3D view so that we can look at the different bulk shoe options in more detail. With Extend Outside, parts of the bulk shoe are created beside our joist, like this. With Extend Inside, the bulk shoe is created mostly inside our joist, with less parts visible to the outside. Next, let's move on to the improved marking tool. It is now possible to add extra information to elements, such as the location of each stud, the locations of doors and windows, as well as which elements are the current element's neighbors. These can be set in the Element Option Dialog's Marking Lines section. I want to display the name of each stud on the frame's bottom plate so I'll check the box next to stud ID bottom. There are a few different options for where the stud ID will be positioned. I'll choose the default option. I'll also check the boxes for opening lines and neighboring element IDs. Now, the bottom plate shows the number of each stud in the framing. Below the window, there is a text displaying the window's dimensions. And finally, at the edge, the ID of the neighboring element is written. Now I'll move on to improvements in Archiframe listings. It is now possible to create summary and transportation lists of the different planks and elements in your project. 
lists are created in the quantity takeoff section of the flank tool dialog. Before creating the list, I'll add a surface texture to one of my wall cladding objects. Then I'll create a summary list by choosing this option from the drop-down menu and clicking Quantities. The summary list adds up the total amount of each material type used in the project. It also differentiates between objects with the same material type but different surface textures. Here, for example, there are separate entries for white, red and yellow cladding. The transportation list is created in the same way, except this time I'll choose the option CSV Elements for Transportation from the drop-down menu. This list does not open automatically in Excel, so I'll open it manually through the File Explorer. The transportation list tells you the greatest height, length, thickness, and so on of each element. In each calculation, all layers in the element are considered. Next, let's move on to the improved tools for modeling I-beams with steel reinforcements. In the lower part of the plank dialog, there is a section called Special Operations. In the drop-down list, there are a few different options for adding reinforcements. I'll start with the white beams belonging to the real roof and the Add Reinforcement option. This will add reinforcements to the beginning and end of each plank, which is selected when the command is started. A length has to be specified for each reinforcement. I'll set a value of 400 mm for the beginning and 500 mm for the end. Another option is to add automatic reinforcements. I'll again start by selecting the planks I want to reinforce. Then I'll open Automatic Reinforcement Settings. In these settings, I can choose whether my reinforcements should include nails and whether grooves will be reinforced. I'll check all the boxes. Once I apply the settings, the reinforcements with nails are immediately added to the ends of the plank. From now on, if I make changes to the plank, Reinforcements will be updated automatically. For example, if I create a groove in this plank, a reinforcement will be added around the groove. Information about these reinforcements can be included in the CNC file. Before doing so, make sure different types of planks have unique IDs. In this case, I'll give my new reinforced roof beams their own ID to differentiate them from the non-reinforced beams. Then in the Plank tools, open the Quantity Takeoffs and CNC file dialog. From the CNC Rider section, I'll choose Default, which is Hundegger. I'll also go with the default Hundegger settings. Then I'll create the file with the CNC button. This brings us to the new CNC file settings available in Archiframe 2018. When dealing with wall elements, it is good to check the boxes Save into separate files based on element IDs, which saves a separate file for each wall element. The option for element related pieces save just core layer is also useful for wall elements. With this box checked, your CNC file will not include planks in the ventilation gap. At the bottom of the dialog, I can determine that the plywood reinforcements in planks will also be included in the CNC file. Here is a screenshot of a BVN file of I-beams which are similar to the ones we created earlier. The red lines indicate the position of reinforcements. The black line represents a groove. Here is another screenshot of a BVN file containing information on the plywood reinforcements themselves. As you can see, 
The reinforcement which is currently selected is cut at an angle. The reinforcements are therefore ready for application after cutting. Finally, Archiframe 2018 has a new custom corner tool. With this tool, it is possible to define your own corner type, which can then be applied in different parts of your project. As an example, I'll apply a custom corner type I created earlier, called long U with blockers, to this corner. For more information on this tool, please see the custom corners video tutorial.